Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Almost Daily Show with your host, Chandler. And the Dave Picardi. And I brought Larry for the run. There he is. Our boy, Larry. Good old Larry. Is it me or did Larry get much handsomer since the last time we saw him? If you're not, if you're listening to this, you don't get to see handsome Larry. But look at those beautiful eyes and the hand. And it's amazing. Feet. God, those are breathtaking. Oh, yeah. Gosh, those feet really light my fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So we get a good one tonight. About. What episode is this? I have no idea. Is this 18? We've lost track, which is actually a good thing. Yeah. You know why? Because we almost do this daily. Almost. Almost consistently. Almost, almost daily. consistently. So today we were we were talking about this earlier and we thought it would be a really good topic. We were thinking like there's a lot of automation stuff out there and there's a lot of people talking about how you don't even have to look at a person to sell stuff and this is the way the future is going to be. But what we realize and what we understand because we do relationship-based marketing is you can't beat the personal interaction. And that's the goal of today's show is to talk a little bit about how automation stuff like that has it fits into the puzzle but what really what's really important and what really bridges the gap between a connection and an acquaintance is that personal interaction yeah so from a numbers standpoint so say uh say say we pay you know a thousand dollars this month for facebook ads and uh if i paid a thousand dollars for facebook ads what do you think i'm uh what what kind of percentage am i getting out of that chan What, what number would you throw on that uh, out of your return? Yeah. We're probably going to get, if it's just a simple like lead generation thing with no relationship built, we're looking at like 1% return probably. Okay. You so might 1%, get, 1%, maybe a little bit better depending on the content or time of year mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Right. So from a number standpoint, so th- this is what Chan and I don't agree with. Right. So we're wasting all this money, right? Like, we were here trying to build relationships with our, with our people and our clients. So if you can engage a thousand people, not with ads, but with content and real stuff to connect with you, you actually now have a thousand customers. Then it's a matter of, and this is what we do with strategy meetings. Now it's a matter of, of figuring out what you're actually selling to the different tiers, right? But you already have a thousand people engaged if you've put out the right content. So it's not, it's not about getting 1% of cold leads. It's about having, having the ability to communicate with a hundred percent of warm leads. Yeah, exactly. We always <clears throat> see these like p- p- things that come out like, Oh, Hey, you need a tripwire and you need this strategy to convert cold leads and do all this. But what it comes down to it is you, when they're cold, you need to warm them up. And the way you warm them up is providing value and showcasing your expertise, showcasing that you're entertaining, showcase that your brand is like a real person and something people can connect to and a brand that people want to follow. And when we do that, we turn those cold leads into warm leads really quick and then into hot leads quickly after that. And that's the cycle. You don't have to spend money on 175,000 different campaigns because you need to convert different variations of leads. You just need to convert people from cold to hot via the relationship. And then maybe now that they're hot, you run something that's like a messenger ad. And now you get them interacting and talk with, talking with you on Facebook Messenger. And now they feel like they know you and they're really connected to you. Now they go over, you send them a link, and now they purchase your product willingly. And you keep doing this and you keep cycling people through and then you, you see a really a big return. And then you also see a return in terms of people coming back and continuously purchasing your products and telling other people about your products. And that's what we want to build ultimately with this relationship marketing game is we want to build raving fans. We don't want to build someone to buy something once. We want to build this into something that someone wants to buy from you continuously five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 times. And then they tell their friends about it who buy 10 times and they tell their friends about it. And when you reach that point and that critical mass, that's when your brand is important in the eyes of the consumer. And that's when your brand has reached the ultimate level of engagement and personal interaction. I want to get to the ultimate level. I'll take you to the ultimate level. Jump That'd on my amazing. magic carpet. Yeah. Yes. I got a so magic so- carpet for you. See, people listening don't believe that, but it's true. That's true. So, you know, I was thinking like to put it, this thing in a different perspective, you know, to really hit home, right? An ad, so face, Facebook ad, you know, attention, 
you know, South Shore, right? We're looking for 15 people just like you for this program. Right? So that's an ad. You're trying, it's clickbait. You're trying to get people to think it's, you know, they're only taking 15 and this thing looks exciting and they told me that it's life changing, so I should click in. As opposed to with lead nurturing and we're building relationships. And then, you know, it might be a messenger ad that says, right, because, you know, Chandler's been following my stuff. I know he's been following my stuff because I'm tracking all those things, right? If you're not, you should be. And, uh, and when I send Chandler a call to action, I say, hey, Chan, this is Dave. We got this thing going on, right? I think this is good for you. Why don't you come in? It's a different sell. When he's been consuming my product and consuming my, you know, like information and, 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 you know, uh, things about being real. So he's seeing that, you know, and he's connected to that and then he'll come in. It's, it's just a, your conversion rates are much higher when you're building that relationship. Yeah, it's huge. When you, when you think about it, they've consumed your content for a while. And then when you post that ad or that call to action, when you're asking them to come in, <clears throat> you organize it. So it feels like you're speaking directly to them. So they consume your content, then you reorganize something based off of all the people who are consuming that says, hey, you watched our last video. We thought it was kind of funny. I know you laughed a little. Now, why don't you come in and laugh more with us? And so now they're saying, hey, I did watch that video and it was funny. It was hilarious. And you know what? I think I am going to see these guys. They're pretty cool. Right. And that's when you reach that point to where you have that personal connection. And I think a lot of people get confused about like personal interaction. It doesn't have to be like one-on-one, -on -one, but it has to feel like it's one-on-one. -on -one. It has to feel like you're speaking directly to them and it has to feel like you're sincere. And one thing that that takes, and this is, you know, what we run into a lot is you can't hire a company to do your stuff for you. You know, if, if you want to have a personal relationship type company, you, the content has to come from you. So, you, know, you can't just say, yep, run an ad, get me leads, and then I'll take care of them. It's just you're overworking and the retention stinks. You know? So you have to put the work in and you have to you know, analyze it and make adjustments and uh, work on strategies. And I mean, these are things Shannon and I do with everybody. But you know, if you're not working with a company like ours, you need to do it. You, know, you have to be engaged and you have to you know, put the effort in to build a relationship with the people listening. Don't just throw stuff at them and think that that's good enough. Yeah, that's a good point. Your content has to be organized in a way that it speaks to your business from your personality and exposes your culture. And hiring a cookie cutter marketing firm to just put crap on your wall doesn't do anything because it makes you look like every single other person that firm is marketing for. And when you look at companies that are doing this, you can get stuff where that's highly personalized from high level firms, but for a small business, it's going to cost twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month because you literally need that company inside your business all the time, doing videos, doing interviews, talking, consuming, right. and really Think about how hard all that is and how much it costs to do. If you if you were just going to do videos and you had to hire a videographer for forty hours a week, it's expensive, you know. So yeah, you exactly. Have to learn how to do this stuff on your own and work with someone that can help you identify the best places to put your money and the best places to hire people. And then to help you understand what you need to pick up for Slack on your end. Yeah, that's it. And when you look at your marketing stuff you're putting out, if you're not sure and you don't have someone helping, you just need to take a step back and look at it from the eyes of the person who's never seen what you're doing. Because it's easy for us to see stuff from our point of view who are used to our industry, who are used to what we're selling and who believe in our products. But you need to flip that around and look at it from the eyes of someone who's never seen what you do. Or you need to find someone who can give you good information about that and say, okay, if I did this, how would you feel? If I did this, how would you feel? If you saw this, how would you feel? And then once you understand the emotional level that people are at when they see your products and your information, your service, then you really understand where your customers are at and you're really going to understand how to bridge that personal interaction to be seemingly personal with them or seemingly one-on-one -on -one when you put it out. And so it speaks to them and it's, it's more than just like primal triggers. Those are just things you're going to trigger people to want to do something immediately, but they're going to regret it later. It's more of it's building trust and it's building an emotional bond with someone. And once you build that, it, it takes a long time to build, but it's a lot harder. It's really hard to break at the same time as well. Yeah, I think what we're just talking about here is traditional lead gen marketing versus relationship marketing. And uh, I think we're coining it in our industry, 
And uh, I think we're going to be the primary drivers of it moving forward, which is pretty cool for us. Uh, but uh, you just got to know your market. You know, if you're if you're a business that is a personal relationship business and a service based business, you know, th- this is the game. You, you got to get in there and build relationships and be a part of people's uh, lives so that they feel connected to you. It's the it's the way to win. In, uh, exactly. This that's it. If you know, if you have a brand that you feel connected to and that you think does a really good job, a strategy is just start following them. Pay attention to what they're doing. Pay attention to their interactions. Pay attention to the people who are consuming their stuff. And you can start to learn and understand how this stuff works. But what, like Dave's saying, this relationship-based and emotional aspect of marketing and understanding people from that level is relatively new. You're not going to see a lot of people doing it. In the next five or 10 years, it's going to probably become more mainstream. But Right now, doing this kind of stuff essentially future-proofs you for what's going to happen in the future. Right. Very cool. All right, guys. This has been another unbelievable Almost Daily show. Oh, gosh. The sound of our voice is just wonderful. We're like the voice birds of our generation. I believe we are. Yeah. I really think so. If you guys are listening to this, give us a vote of confidence. Just say yes. Yes. I started it. I'm starting the trend. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, All right, in, until maybe tomorrow, we're not quite sure, but probably most likely. Absolutely. Get out there, build some relationships. Yeah. See ya. Later.